the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They'll turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myth. Hi, uh, I'm Mark Lutz. I'm the Growth and Healing Pastor and the Director of Life Reset Ministries at the Vineyard. Uh, the other day I was watching a news story, and I, I don't even remember what the news story was. And it doesn't matter because it was, it was a trigger from having watched lots of news stories about uh, coronavirus, uh, opinions about how it started, strategies about what we're going to do with it, about uh, political uh, tensions and social unrest an increase in violence and protesting, and whichever one I watched, uh, it triggered a thought, and this thought came to my mind, people believe what they want to believe. Uh, there are folks who want to avoid the feeling of helplessness that comes when you think about uh, being in a global pandemic, and they believe wearing a mask will help uh, contain the spread of COVID-19. There are people who really don't like the discomfort of wearing a mask. And they believe that wearing a mask does nothing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. There are people who've lost loved ones and are feeling deep pain and sorrow and anger. They believe police departments should be defunded. There are other people who've had very different life experiences and they grow impatient with the unrest and they believe that if you uh, don't commit crimes and don't defy police uh, instructions, you can re reduce the number of people being shot. Now, the, the trouble with believing what you want to believe is that sometimes what you believe will overlap with what is true and what is real. And sometimes it won't. And it's really hard to tell the difference in the moment which one is happening. Uh, I was thinking about this and then another scripture came into my mind, it's from Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 15, uh, where Jesus says, um, the time has come, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the good news. Now, a, a few years ago, I was in a discipleship group, and we were studying this scripture intensely. It was a basis for a tool that we use to uh, explore any situation we're in, to try to figure out what is God saying to us, and what would we be willing to do based on what God is uh, saying to us. And so we looked at that verse over and over. And I have to say, it always seemed backwards to me. Uh, repent and believe. It, in my mind had it that you believe first, and then you repent. That a, a person believes when the evidence is compelling enough, and the Holy Spirit convicts them that God is real, and that he sent his son into the world to live and to die for us, uh, to redeem us, to reconcile us to the Father, and then touched by God's love, they repent and turn from a, a, a life of wickedness to a pursuit of holiness. Uh, my mind had it that you believe first and then you repent, that you had to believe first in order to repent. But now it was starting to make a little more sense, uh, repent and believe. Uh, perhaps I have to repent of always wanting things to be the way I want them to be so I can hear how God says they are and how God says uh, he wants things to be. Uh, I think we all have to wrestle with this notion of surrender to God, to trusting him. If we're ever going to be able to do as Jesus did when in the Garden of Gethsemane before uh, he was to be crucified, he prayed. Uh, he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. And so here we are in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, uh, social unrest, uh, political tensions, and our own personal uh, crises still coming at us uh, like life always gives us. And before us is the decision that we'll have to make about what will we believe and what will we do. Will we uh, yield to the pool of a narrative that we find validating and reassuring to us? Uh, will we be open to the story that God has to tell, uh, even if it's not just inconvenient, but costly? So I, I, when I do these talks, I usually end with a prayer. Uh, today I want to end with a specific prayer. 
I want to end with the serenity prayer. And many people are familiar with the short version, but not everyone has heard uh, the long version. And I, I find that I've been praying it a lot lately. It's, it's just so uh, rich and full of meaning, and it seems so appropriate to the times of what we're going through. So I invite you to join me uh, as I pray. Uh, God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, enduring hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever. In the name. Amen.